Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Minasan and welcome to the class once again in the second lecture series on Japanese language and culture. This class is a continuation of lecture 7 where we were doing a passage on dango which is a sweet, a very popular sweet in Japan liked by adults and children equally. So there were a lot of things that we could cover in the passage, there were some things which we could not cover, so we are going to do it today. So let us see what we have here, which is new today for you. Dango wa Nihon no yume na tabemono des. Kodomo tachi mo, otona mo, dango ga daisuki des. Dango wa amakute oishi tabemono des. Nihon ni kuri dango ya yaki dango ya hanami dango nado ga arimas. Nihon jin wa hanami no toki. Hanami dango o tsukurimas. Watashi wa kino gakko no shokudo de tomodachi to issho ni oishi dango o tabemashita. Oishikatta kara watashi tachi wa ashita mo soko e itte dango o tabemas. Minasan mo zehi tabete mite kudasai. So you just heard the kaiwa and I'm sure you could understand most of it. Let us see what we have here which is new today for you. Watashi wa Kino gakko no shokudo de. Place de. Some action. Tomodachi to issho ni with my friend. Oishi dango o tabe mashita. So o over here shows object and direct relationship with the verb. Action is happening on this noun. So we have done o as well and particle de as I said shows action. The action is Oishikatta kara watashi tachi wa ashita mo soko e itte dango o tabemas. Oishikatta is past of, past of I adjective. Katta kara giving reason. It was very tasty. Therefore, watashi tachi wa ashita mo also Tomorrow also, soko e itte, dango o tabemas. So over here, the speaker could have closed the sentence, finished the sentence by saying, soko e ikimas. So shite, dango o tabemas. Join the two sentences by te form. That's what we did last time, if you remember, joining two, three sentences and making one out of it by using te form of the verb. So, minasan mo zehi tabete mite kudasai. This is what we are going to do in our lesson. Zehi means must. Zehi tabete mite kudasai. Please eat and see. So, I hope the passage is understood now. Whatever you could not understand, I have explained and we will do all these things in detail in our lesson now. Whatever is left, we will try to complete it in our next lesson. Now, we have learnt te form for adjectives. That is by joining two adjectives with kute. And when you join it with kute, it is for I adjectives. So, let us see what we will do with I adjectives in kute form with noun and na adjectives. So now you can look at this example and see hea wa akarui des, hea wa hiroi des. Two sentences, how are you going to make one out of it? You will write the kute. How will you do the kute? You already know by removing the i of the adjective, adding kute over here plus another i adjective. 
and we make one sentence out of it. Heya wa akarukute hiroi des. Now, what are we going to do for nouns and na adjectives? It's very simple. Nouns and na adjectives follow a similar pattern as you already know. So, we are going to add de. Now, what is de? De is the te form for this. And you already know that this is a combination of particle de plus the su from the mas form of the verb. So, this is combined and makes this. So, we will add de. Now, how are we going to add de? Let us see. Rao san wa indojin des. Rao san wa Tokyo denki no shine des. Shine is kaisha in, which is kaisha no employee, company employee. So, Rao san wa indojin de, joining this sentence, which means and Tokyo denki no shine des. That is how you are going to join nouns. Now, if you have to join na adjective, then Mariko san wa kirei des, atama ga ii des. Mariko san wa kirei des, atama ga ii des. So, Mariko san wa kirei de, atama ga ii des. So, you can join na adjectives as well by using de over here. So, very simple in te form for i adjectives, na adjectives and noun, this is what you have to keep in mind. It is kute over here and de for noun and na adjectives. Examples are given, you can go over the examples and make sentences on your own as well. Now, as I told you, ya is similar in meaning to to. Ya also joins nouns and noun phrases. So, what is the difference? The difference lies in the fact that when we use particle to to join nouns, it is an exhaustive listing that you have to name each and every thing that is present or person that is present over there. Each and every noun has to be listed. Whereas with ya, which is used as a conjunction and means and nouns are to be joined, but the speaker decides which is important and he mentions those things, those items and leaves the rest for the listener to understand that there are other things as well. Now, how do you say and so on or etc. that is shown by nado. And so, let us see what the pattern is. Now, the pattern is very, very simple. Noun 1, ya noun 2, ya noun 3, nado ga arimas, etc. There are other things as well. Why ga over here? Because the things can be seen, they are known to the speaker. Thus, ga is used. Now, nado means etc and is generally followed by particle va, ga, kara, de and so many others. We have only mentioned a few which you will be requiring for conversation. For example, you can see tsukue no ue ni jisho ya techo ya pen nado ga arimasu. So, nado over here is etc. So, there could be hundreds of things on the table, but the speaker thinks that jisho and techo, techo is diary, personal diary and pen, those are the most important things that are required. So, those are the things that are being mentioned over here by the speaker and ya is used. So, remember the pattern noun 1, ya noun 2, ya noun 3, nado ga arimasu or if it is people, then imasu. Rao san ya Tanaka san ya Mariko san nado ga imasu. So, these three are there and there are others as well. Now, Nihon no tabimono no naka de. You have done this form that within a group, gaijin wa sushi ya yakiniku ya tempura nado ga daisuki desu. So, there are hundreds of things that are there 
in Japanese cuisine. So, out of those what are the most liked? Well, sushi, yakiniku and tempura. There could be others also, but these are the three things that the speaker wants to mention or highlight. So, with ya you do not have to mention all, it is not exhaustive like to, you can just mention a few and use nado. There is another example for you, America ni Indo ya Chugoku ya Nihon nado kara etc. Kara from Gakusei wa Ozei ikimasu. Lot of students from India, Chugoku and Nihon go to America. That does not mean that these are the only three countries from where Gakusei go to America. There are lot of other places also, but the speaker is only highlighting these three. Probably from Asia, he wants to or she wants to highlight, but there are others as well. That is understood. Ya and to both mean and. One is exhaustive and one is not. Now, in our passage, we had a word tabe. Mono, tabe, mono. Now, tabe you already know. The other reading for this character is shoku. So, tabe mono over here means eatables. So, mono is coming from here. Now, look at this kanji. It's very interesting. We have done this kanji once. I'm doing it again. I could find this picture. So, I want to show it to you, it is easy to memorize with a picture. So, this kanji you have done as ushi, remember and gogo, very similar looking kanji which means noon and this means ushi which is a cow. So, well, if we join the two, one, two, three, this is ushi and then what do we do? This is like the trunk of an elephant. Over here you can see this is how it is made for things. Now, the basic meaning of this character is cattle. It is associated with cow. So, cattle and elephants somehow makes things. I could find this picture. So, I have put this for you. It is easy to memorize. Now, there is another word with mono. You had done vasure mono, mono, nomi mono, nomi mono, kai mono, then tabe mono, which I did just now also with you. Now, there is another word. This is kuda mono. Kuda mono is fruits. Same character mono over here and this means fruit itself. So, you can remember this word and words with mono. Now, there is another one, kiru mono, kiru mono meaning something that you wear. So, clothes is kiru mono, all of it and this is the kanji for Kiru, which is to wear. Now, we will do the kanji later. Today, I want you to concentrate only on mono. We will do the kanji for kiru and this kanji later. Now, you have chu goku. This is the kanji for goku, which is country. This means center or middle. And how this is country? Because you have this king, of course, his hands are closed over here, but there are some explanations where he has his hands spread out and he is trying to show that this is my territory. So, the king is ruling this closed area with all the gems and all the money that he has. The gems are shown over here. So, a closed area, a closed area where a person is the head and you can see this is how it has been shown in lines with the crown on top and the jewels over here. Now, 
This is another interesting kanji and I want you to concentrate on kuni which is also koku and in this case it is chugoku. chugoku. So basic meaning is kuni which is country, another reading is koku and for China it is chu goku. The kanji is here, it is written like this 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5 and of course you cover it. So now how will you write? This is not the way to write it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 over here like this. This is how you will write the kanji for kuni or koku. Now, there is another character over here which is soto and kuni. What does it mean now? Can someone tell me? Well, this means gai koku. Gai koku is abroad, outside. This is out, soto and kuni. So, outside my country and that would be Gaikoku. Now, figure out a word with this. You have done the word. For Japanese, we are all foreigners. So, what is the word over here? You can tell me later in the next class. Now, how is gai, which is soto, made? So, there is this explanation where you go out to have tabako. Ta is like this, ba and but well, there is another very interesting explanation. This means evening. This character means evening. And this means stick. So, in China, the uh, fortune tellers would come out of their houses in the evenings, put a stick in front of them and tell the fortune of all the people passing by. So, that is why this has become the kanji for soto. That is another explanation. You can remember that and maybe it will become easy for you to learn this kanji. So, gai koku, outside my country. Now, we had done ta form last time, the plain past form of the verb in our lesson with kara. Now, you will see how it is made. You have the mass form, all of this. You have done this, you know it. We need to concentrate on this one. So, today we are going to do asonda, the past form. Asobi mashta or asonda. You have done the te form as well. Asonde. So, just change the e to a or you can say for te form just change the a to e. Now, you will see how it is made all the other forms we will do later as and when it is required. So, you have done the te form similarly for ta also. So, kaku these are all group 1 verbs. I am just quickly telling you so that you can do it easily over here. This is group 2 and this is again group 1. These are all the irregular verbs of group 1 till here. So, you will see how it is made. Kaita and if you remove the ta, you can put te over here for all of them. So, isoida, isoi, de. Tonda, tonde, matta, matte, nonda, nonde, shinda, shinde, hanashta, hanashte, atta, atte, tabeta, tabete and skutta, skutte. Now, this is the past which we had done with kara, meaning that the action is already over. It is talking about the past action and then what you plan to do after that. Now, we had also learnt how to use te form of the verb more than once in a sentence, isn't it? Verb te plus verb te plus another verb. Watashiwa mall e itte, shopping o shite, uchi e so, now first we will see how to use te form with mimas 
and what it means and then use it with kudasai and learn how it will convey different meanings. So, look at this. Rao san wa doko ni iru ka denwa shite mimasu. Rao san wa doko where imasu ka watashi wa denwa shimasu or denwa shite mimasu. I will call and see is what it means mimasu over here. This action I will do the first verb in te form I will do and then see where he is. Now these are two sentences Rao san wa doko desu ka shirimasen ima denwa shimasu I will call now or Tanaka san ni kikimasu I will ask Tanaka san. So then you can have these two sentences or three sentences in one Rao san wa doko ni iru ka denwa shite mimasu where he is I will just call and see. So the meaning is not see actually as in look but the meaning is that I will do this activity and then get to know where he is. Another sentence is there Rao san wa jimushitsu ni iru ka dou ka denwa shite mite kudasai. So now A san is saying over here Rao san wa jimushitsu ni iru ka dou ka is he in the accounts office or not present or not Tanaka san denwa shite mite kudasai please call and see whether he is there or not so kudasai means please so verb in te form plus again there is a verb in te form plus kuda sai. So this goes together. Mite kudasai. Then washte mite kudasai. Now you can replace this part. Niku taberu ka dou ka. Picnic ni iku ka dou ka. So Rao san wa niku o taberu ka dou ka chotto. Then washte mite kudasai. Or then washte kiite kudasai. Please ask and see. Raishu no picnic ni Rao san wa iku ka dou ka. Is he going to come or not? Please ask him. Then washte kiite kudasai. Please ask him and see what his plans are. So now verb in te form plus verb in te form plus kuda sai as i told you kuda sai is please it's a request so two te forms plus kuda sai and this the second one in te form is mite kuda sai this goes as one so you can make some sentences with your partner now you can practice kono ryori wa oishii kara tabete mite kudasai. So this ryori is very tasty or this dish that I have made is very tasty kara because reason for doing an activity. So tabete mite kudasai. This is one please see. Please and see over here. And what do you see? Tabete mite kudasai. There is another one, a girl is having milk as you can see. So, milk wa oishii kara dozo nonde mite kudasai. Please have and see. These are examples for you so that you can easily make simple sentences and do conversation. Now, there is a small kaiwa. Ishitsubutsu tori atsukaijo is lost and found office. So over there, Rao san rings up. Moshi moshi, asuimasen. Kesa densha de saifu o wasuremashita. Kesa is today morning. Nanji no densha desu ka? Gozen hachiji yonjuppon no densha desu. So eki in says, chotto matte kudasai. Now eki in. Kaisha in you did just now. In, employee of the kaisha. So eki 
in employee of the eki. So, ちょっと待ってください。私は遺失物取扱い上に聞いてみます。This is incorrect over here. So, this is J, Jo, as given here. 遺失物取扱い上に聞いてみます。I will ask and see and let you know. すみません。お願いします。So, I think、uh, the kaiwa is very, very clear. ちょっと待ってください。Please wait for a minute. It's an expression. By now, I'm sure all of you know what it is. There is a polite way of saying exactly this, which I'm going to tell you right now. And k i t e m i m a s I have already explained. And now we will see how you can change d e p a t o instead of densha. So instead of saifu, you can use techo or teki. Techo is your personal diary, teki is your pass, and any verb that you want. So now I just told you, Chotto Mate Kuda Sai. So Chotto Mate Kuda Sai is please wait for a minute. But now we are talking on phone and the person wants to be polite. He's in an office. So he says, instead of Chotto Mate Kuda Sai, which is a little informal, so you can say, Sho Sho O Machi Kuda. Please wait for a minute. So, please wait for a minute instead of Chotto Mate Kudasai. So, please wait for a minute instead of Chotto Mate Kudasai, which is more informal and can be used with people who are your age or people younger to you, but not to seniors, to teachers, to people higher in rank to you or in a formal situation. Similarly, there is Onegai Shimas and Kudasai. Both mean please. What is the difference? Kudasai and Onegai Shimas. So, Onegai Shimas, please do a certain activity for me. For example, from conversation, he said, I will just ask and see. So, this gentleman Rao san, he says, Onegai Shimas, please do that for me. This also means Kudasai. But this requires a verb over here. If we do not use a verb, then it is noun o kuda sai, which means please give this to me. So it is for giving. Over here, onegai shimas is a request to do something. Kuda sai will become a request only if the verb is added over here. Before, Kudasai and that too in te form. That's the difference. So please remember how to use it. Now I have some kanjis for you. This is kesa. This means ima. Ima. And this is asa. So plus nichi plus and tsuki. Means asa, which is given over here, and kyo, which is today. So, ima no hi, today is this kanji if you put nichi over here. Then, asa, as I told you, is this one, and kyo no asa becomes. Kesa, which is very, very specific for today morning. Then I could find a picture for you. So you can see, then sha. This is sha. One reading is kurma, which is also the meaning of this、uh, kanji. Another reading is sha, as you have done in. Then, sha. Now, then is coming from here. Just see, ame falls here on the fields, and then there is electricity from water. So, then, sha, electric 
train is then sha then jido sha this means vehicles kurma that runs or moves automatically is jido sha meaning vehicles now the kanji is this sha means actually wheels so something moving on wheels is a sha is a kurma new kanji is over here but i want you to concentrate on sha today from here which is kurma and then so then is like this like this and it's a 13 stroke character 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 please remember that you have to complete your kanji this place on the right side of the block that should be your last stroke so this is a 13 stroke character you have kurma also over here i'll make kurma here like 5 6 and Seven. Once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. It is a 7 stroke character. Over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. A 7 stroke character kurma. This shows the chassis of the car, the base of the car. Now, there is denwa. You have done this as hanashi. Hanashi. Now, this is very interesting. This means to speak. It is a seven stroke character. Speak. You. Now, this means shita. Means tongue. So, you speak with your tongue is hanashimas. So, hanasu. Hanasu. There is another explanation here for Hanashimas, which is you speak thousand words. This is also the kanji for thousand, sen, thousand words with your mouth. That is Hanashi. And then you have already done over here. So then wa means phone. So you speak on something that is electric. Electric phone is then wa. There are more kanjis for you today and I had left you with this namai. I want you to concentrate on these two. This means before we have done it earlier also as zen. So namai go zen you can see over here go zen. Then you have this kanji which is there in namai, mei, jin, mei jin. Another reading for this character is mei, one is na and mei butsu, famous things. Now you will see that this character not just has the reading of mono as in tabemono, but it also has the reading of butsu, mei butsu, which is famous. So now this character means famous, used for people. So mei jin, a person who is known, famous person, na mai, your name, which everybody knows, mei butsu, which is a famous Thing. Now we have mei shi, same reading, mei shi, mei shi is your business card and mei shi again means noun and the character is written like this ta and kuchi, ta and kuchi. Mei butsu, butsu is again coming from this uh, pictogram is used with the trunk and uh, tusks, mei butsu, then yumei, yumei is someone who is famous, mei butsu is famous things, 
this is someone you may this means famous you otherwise means to be present to exist so just like this and month you may and then we have you may jin you may is famous and jin is a person you may jin so lot of kanjis for you all i want you to do today is only concentrate on this character which is na and me different words with this character and reading so as i had promised you last time i was going to give you kotowaza which is proverbs with mimi i had said i'll give you another one as we are using this word dango a lot in our uh, passage so let us see the two uh, proverbs that we have in japanese proverbs are called kotowaza so you have this gentleman looking at dango and it's written food is my choice so someone who enjoys food more than nature going to a hanami party going to view flowers and you just keep eating you don't enjoy nature basically meaning that you are more practical you are a very very practical person you can only think of material things so that person is called a hanayori dango so more than being with nature you enjoy eating or something very materialistic sekkaku hanami o mini kiteru no ni oni san wa tabeteru bakkari desu after so much difficulty after a full year after preparing we have finally come for a hanami party to view flowers with family and what is oni san doing he is only eating yappari hanayori dango type desu ne he is a typical hanayori dango type of a person who likes food over nature who is very very materialistic so this is a popular kotowaza in japanese then there is another kotowaza and because it has something to do with mimi and the kanji for mimi we had done so what is the kotowaza kabe ni mimi ari shoji ni me ari so kabe is wall so even walls have ears we have it in english as well shoji is these paper partitions used as walls in japan so that's called shoji and me is eyes so you better be careful what you are saying because everything can be heard people could be listening so all secrets have to be guarded have to be very careful about keeping secrets from people meaning you don't want people to hear something then you should be careful where you are saying and what you are saying because even walls have ears people could be hearing anything from outside and you may not know besides this another thing is that these partitions which are called shoji are made of paper and whatever you speak is heard outside very easily so you have to be very very careful in what you say so these are the two very very famous idioms in japan you can use them in your conversation so with this i would like to finish today's class i think there are a lot of things which we have covered there are a lot of kanjis we have done two new kotowaza that you have learnt you may be knowing some uh, two new you have done today try to use those in conversation and all that we have revised today new things that we have done today learn about uh, dango go on the net see and learn about dango and uh, we will meet again very soon uh, with something new maybe something that is left from here we can revise that in our next lesson till then namaskar and oyasumi nasai